I was given a link to a really cool video on I think this is something that every friggin human on the planet should understand I, my whole channel is is discussing a lot of this information that I've personally studied um, this is probably explains in, in a lot more detail why this bottled water concept would help anybody solve whatever problem that they're dealing with. Personally, I think we are dealing with a lot of global issues and we're looking for one leader to come up with the answer to everything a and we're all sitting there with our heads cut off and yet it's like the universe is hiring. You, all you have to do is solve your problem if every person on the universe just decided to be the solution to their particular problem we, we, we'd create world peace. If you're looking for your own peace in your own world you'd be creating world peace but as long as you're pushing your concept of world peace you know peace for somebody else telling somebody else hey life would be good if you just did it my way um, then that's that's what's creating help. That's what's creating war. Now, this is my perception. It, 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 you know, that I'm kind of contradicting myself that if everybody just did things my way, the world would be better. And it's like, no, discover your way. <laughs> That's about the limit to to what I would say is just discover your way. And this is this w bottled water concept that uh, I've been introducing helps you be more self-aware of your own issues and how it, it solves it. We are basically all programmed to believe things that aren't necessarily as true as you think it is. Everything you happen to believe to be true turns out to be completely false. Um, so give this, I'd really like to open up the discussion to this uh, documentary. You'll find it really, really interesting. Might be a little on the long side. And uh, let the discussion begin. The following documentary presents new developments in neuroscience and a solution to the many current unsolved problems in physics. While it keeps clear of metaphysical correlations and is solely focused on scientifically verifiable data, it also has philosophical repercussions pertaining to life, death and the origin of the universe. Due to its many layers and density in presentation, it may require multiple viewings to fully comprehend its implications even though considerable effort has been made to simplify the complex scientific concepts that are discussed. Furthermore, I would like to thank the author for allowing me to follow and report on his work, as he wanted to remain dedicated to his research and avoid becoming involved in its media coverage. The human brain is a network of approximately 100 billion neurons. Different experiences create different neural connections which bring about different emotions. And depending on which neurons get stimulated, certain connections become stronger and more efficient, while others may become weaker. Now, to simplify things, these neurons, what I believe is happening. What I believe is a neuron is a belief system. You have every neuron is a belief and your belief systems have to have attachments with all of your other belief systems and as you have more and more experiences in life you develop new belief systems as you go along. I've been introducing this concept of holodynamics which 
they refer belief systems to be um, holodyne. An experience is, is felt that you need to survive in, so your survival laws are your beliefs. You'll develop a belief. Oh, I need to be doing this. Oh, I need to be doing that. And whatever your survival belief that you create, you create this neuron. And uh, these neurons, to make these pass with other, you know, one belief gets connected to another belief, they, the, think of it as life is like a river. And you have, your, your life path is, is one massive river that you, you go off into different branches and some of them are wrong and you have to, you know, come back onto your main path. So, um, you will develop these belief systems that will take you, you know, down a wrong path and you'll, you know, experiment with that belief, find out it doesn't work, and then you'll develop a new belief system. So it will um, weaken old belief systems. They'll tend to go away. They may be little hints, you know, memories from the, you know, history that may come up from time to time, but the more they don't come up, the more they can just disappear and completely be gone from your reality. The stronger ones are your main core belief system. And, and one thing before I even get into too much of this video, that this whole opinion that I have is based on my belief system, my comprehension of the sciences that I'm going to give my opinion to, they're biased based on my belief system. Now, the creator of this video has, this, has his own biases, has his own belief systems and neural nets that formed together, gave him a passion, uh, a and formulated this document. My belief system, seen this, attracted this video, had my different kind of opinion to it that I'm adding and editing and doing, you know, uploading it for anybody else to discuss it. So basically, every single human on this planet has their own belief system. If you have something in common with other people, it doesn't necessarily mean it's right. It just means there's a lot of people holding the same belief system. I'm suggesting that everything we believe is wrong Look at our global system. It's all collapsing. Our economics, our justice system, our education system, our political system, medical system, every single system, every single belief, every single thing that we happen to believe to be true ain't working so good for us. So maybe it's not true. Maybe everything and how we perceive wor our world is not true at all. Our neural net are guiding us down a path that we're going to keep going down that path until we see oh it ain't so it ain't working so good we may we might want to develop a new belief system religion is a really strong um, influence in creating our belief systems you're you're asking the universe for answers how do i survive this hell and you'll come up with a religion or a book that'll tell you this is how you do it. You could go to school and, and they will influence you, their perception of reality, their beliefs on you. You will um, build a stronger belief system based on the agreement. Your agreements on you being right is the amount of paycheck you get or how large the group is that you have that believes in you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that those are true beliefs. I personally believe if your belief systems are right, it actually works for you. And not works in the short term, but actually the long term. And if you are right, then other people would see that you are right, and everybody would develop the same belief system. And that's what I think this big uh, 2012 is all about, is we're all going to be joining, 
combining all of our belief systems into one common belief that works for us all. Right now we are all disjointed. We all have so many different forms of belief that it's contradicting everybody else. Nothing, nothing we believe is actually working for ourselves individually and it's not working for us collectively. So it's like time for humanity to develop a completely new belief system. And how is that done? I'll continue. This is what's called neuroplasticity. Someone who trains to be a musician will create stronger neural connections that link the two hemispheres of the brain in order to be musically creative. Virtually any sort of talent or skill can be created through training. Rudiger Gam, who was a self-admitted hopeless student, used to fail at basic math and went on to train his abilities and became a famous human calculator capable of performing extremely complex mathematics. Now this particular um, problem, admitting that you are, you know, failure as a student, you know, and failed math and, and trained the brain to be, uh, you know, a human calculator, I kind of question, was that, you know, a person's individual problem and solution or was that a problem that was pressured by society? Society wants you to be the perfect student. Society says you're failing. Society judged you and you want to fit within society. So while you want to fit within society, you'll, you'll be the solution society wants for you. And I'm saying that's probably a wrong direction to go into. Why would you want why would you want to be a human calculator? Where does that benefit you? It makes you part of the group. The group that doesn't work. Um I think it's extremely relevant because why would this be an issue to you? Where is your perspective in that particular problem? Where is your full potential? And where is society's pressure on you, the influence of society pressuring you to fit within it? For me, I've had a lot of global pressure to be better at English. I suck at English. I have no wish, want, and desire to it. I can admit I'm a failure at English. But I have never fit in to society, don't want to fit within society because I've always seen a lot of things wrong within society. I don't think that I need to be perfect at English to be the, my full potential. That would be, so this problem that I have experienced that society is pushing on me, I can take two directions fit within society that I know doesn't work and be the master at English and write the book I know I should be writing or take a different path and say hey I've got some really good information would really love to write a book find a writer somebody who sings at writing I am not one that loves to sing at writing I love singing sharing the information talking making videos on um, public speaking that is more my thing I would be taking away somebody else's potential um, by being all, by being perfect at my full potential and perfect at being the writer. If I'm the writer and, and, and the speaker, it, what, what does the writer write? You know, that, that puts the pressure on the writer to be the master at everything. And I think that's where a lot of um, motivational speakers are going wrong. They're you know, being the master at trying to solve a problem and being a master at writing and it's like, no, you're just a master at writing books and you might want to learn a little bit more about the subject that you're trying to influence on society. Um, so it, we're all, you know, how do you want to perceive your problem? Do you want to perceive it as, is this something that you really want to work at or is this something society is trying to push on you? Um, and I think this is where we're, we're really, really going wrong is we all tend to push our concepts of what everybody else should be and we've got very little focus on what we think individually we should be. Um, 
we 